as a leader, I'm successful only if I make other people successful. There was nothing really that existed that brought the world together on an online platform about inclusion of people of determination. So it started with an idea of sketching out an app. When a young player starts his career, that is the moment where talent needs to be developed and explored and, and nurtured. Okay. You need to love the product you build and the people using your product need to love your product. This is Tech Waves. I'm Laurelin from Dubai World Trade Center, bringing you your ultimate tech playlist powered by Jitex from our WeWork studio. Startups may be small companies, but they play a huge role in the worldwide economic growth. The global startup economy is worth nearly $3 trillion, a figure that is larger than the GDP of the UK, France or Brazil. Startups create more jobs and are contributing to the economic dynamics by driving innovation. Even though we are talking about small companies and the startup ecosystem, my guest today represents the iconic global tech giant. He grew up in Milano, studied in Spain, did his MBA from Harvard, and he is a big fan of football supporting AC Milan. So let's kick off the conversation with Roberto, director of Microsoft Startup for Middle East and North Africa. Hi, I'm so happy I'm with Roberto today at the studio. So, hi Roberto, welcome to WeWork Office. How are you? Hi Laureline, very good. Thank you for having me today. Uh, looking forward to our conversation. So just before we start to, to talk about business, I really would like to understand the man uh, behind Roberto. So, what kind of, uh, of person are you? So, I've been working in a family where I've been seeing and living the ups and downs on of, of what an entrepreneur you know, usually does, right? So, uh, so very much more kind of an action-oriented kind of person rather than uh, reactive or, uh, you know, I don't like to stay behind the desk. Or, behind the uh, desk, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you grew up in, uh, in Spain, uh, no, in Italy, in Italy sorry. Yeah. And then after you moved to Spain, uh, I read that uh, after you also spent time in, in France, in Paris, and then now in Dubai. So you are an international citizen. I love that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I took this Erasmus uh, program that in Europe you can do to study abroad. So I did my last year of university in Spain, in Valencia, and then I, I loved Spain. Uh, you know, I, I put all, all destinations possible to get a place in, in, in Spain. Um, and uh, I, I studied there and I started working there. Uh, you know, I kind of followed my heart. And, and then uh, when uh, I changed a few jobs after, then I had the chance yeah, to, to travel a lot, to uh, live in, in, in the UK, in France, in Paris, and then relocate to Dubai almost seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely for me, uh, you know, uh, living abroad, uh, first of all, it's not the usual Italian stereotype. Where, yeah, you know, you, I know you, in Europe, we are not too keen to yeah. do these kind of things. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Italian and also French people, will, we have, we can say we, we don't have everything, but yeah, we have a lot of things in, in our country. So yeah. we, we can just yeah grow up there and live there. And uh... No, that's true. And, and, and honestly, the, the, the usual Italian style is, is Italian, you know, uh, likes to live with their family, with family, their mom, and they cannot course. separate from that. So <laughs> it was a big experience that, that in itself. But also, uh, you know, the best takeaway for me is the diversity of experiences. Today, you're in Dubai. You yeah. represent, uh, you are the director of uh, Microsoft Startup Middle East and, and Africa. Um, so I, I guess, uh, yeah, it's very intense. So it is. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you can manage the balance between uh, work and uh, personal because I know you have two two boys. So yeah, yeah, it's you can do it. Yeah, you can manage this balance. I can do. I can manage yeah? the balance. Yeah. I I love my 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 boys. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's pure energy, right? Yeah. So when uh, when you go back home or when they see you after a long day of work and they start running towards you 
because they want to hug you. It's just you get back energy again true, and you, true, you want true, to spend true. quality time with them and not yeah. just... Uh, so Microsoft Startup, tell me, what is exactly your role? Because when we say we are the director, so what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, forget about the titles. Yeah. Uh, to me, uh, honestly, titles have, uh, are important to a certain degree because uh, with title comes not, you know, certain sort of access to certain things, but it's, it's, it, it's not really important to me. Okay. So the important thing is uh, I'm responsible to drive uh, uh, the engagement and the work that Microsoft wants to do with startups in the region. Okay. To me, uh, it has to do with impact and legacy here because um, here we live in a, in a region where for a lot of people, entrepreneurship has to do with uh, their lives and the lives of their children. And it's a matter of life. So uh, imagine uh, uh, if you take uh, Imagine the whole population of India and half of China. That's the number of people we have unbanked in, in the world. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. a lot of these people are in this region. Uh, Egypt has 80% of population that is unbanked. So helping founders, entrepreneurs that comes with idea to solve for real problems, take financial inclusion, financial literacy, accessibility, we'll probably talk later, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the opportunity there is to make a real impact uh, in the life of millions of people, of people yeah. and uh, because entrepreneurship is all about, uh, uh, you know, tackling into the real problems, building solutions for these problems, giving hope. Uh, and also, if you think about youth and the future of this region, true, uh, true. there is an interest in, in diversifying economy from oil to knowledge based. And that can happen also through founders, startups, entrepreneurs and enabling them to be successful. Okay. So there is an impact that we want to have in the ecosystem to empower startups uh, to, to achieve more, to empower founders to achieve more. Uh, we focus on B2B startups, we can talk more about that, but uh, we, we, we engage, we, we, we see it as an ecosystem play, right? So we are successful if we empower others in the mm -hmm. ecosystem, like startups, but also uh, ecosystem players, whether it's investors or family offices or uh, community hubs, accelerators, to be successful themselves and, and founders ultimately to be successful. To be successful. Yeah. Last question, Roberto. It's about the situation we are all facing today. So we are still in difficult time. So what does it mean to be a leader in uh, today's time? How do you succeed yeah. to, 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 to give the energy, the resources to your team yeah. and to still move on? My thinking is, is completely beyond the uh, pandemic COVID. Is, what is true is that these times are probably more uncertain mm -hmm. and complex mm -hmm. uh, than it used to be in the yeah, past. Yeah. So then, uh, to me, first of all, leadership is about measuring success through others' success. So okay. me as a leader, I'm successful on, only if I make other people successful. And, and a leader is someone who can inspire other people to follow you, even just for out of curiosity. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. Then how empowering teams, uh, to me, it starts with uh, providing clarity of purpose. Okay. So you as a leader, that's your job. Uh, sometimes uh, you, you work in big corporations and they tell you you need to learn how to embrace politics, navigate ambiguity, and yeah. that's true. Yeah. It's, part it's, of, it's, it's part of, but... But sometimes people hide behind that and, and justify that, but not bringing clarity of purpose and yeah. direction, right? So yeah. the job of the leader is to ask the hard questions, uh -huh. provide this clarity of purpose, yeah. and then enabling the sources for people to... Uh, to get to be successful on that, right? So, and to me, that comes with having uh, psychological safety. So, enabling an environment where people bring their own self to work, they feel that they can disagree, mm -hmm. uh, but that that can happen because there is a positive tension. Mm -hmm. um, people uh, that are fiercely independent on one side, but mm -hmm. they are able to be invincible as a team. So, uh, you know, pass the credit uh, uh, and and keep the blame. That should be the attitude, and keeping it communication informal. Sometimes. Um, leaders take that as, as authority and, and the communication is like, you cannot but say yes, because it's, you surround yourself with yes men, right? Or yeah, yes women. Yeah, yes women, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah. But, but yes attitude. No, it should be the opposite. So uh, the, 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 the job of the leader should that of uh, enabling an informal communication, like the one you have at the coffee machine, struggling, mm -hmm. informal, keeping things fluid, making things happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that's what, what I believe is, and this is how I'm trying to empower my teams. Um, to, to follow and to, to execute and to make things happen. This is what ultimately we are about, especially in the startup ecosystem. It's all about, uh, you know, uh, working with founders that want to make things happen. So exactly. we, we are kind of a startup within, within Microsoft today. Well, thank you, Roberto, for this first, uh, first conversation. Uh, I think your first guest uh, is arrived, so I will just uh, leave, uh, leave it and give my seat to, to this first guest.
Welcome to Roberto Mini Podcast, first and last episode. Uh, before I will sell it on NFT after we tokenize it. Today, actually, we are recording is 20th of May and uh, actually is Global Accessibility Awareness Day. So we couldn't but having uh, as a special guest, Afsa Kader. Uh, she's the co-founder of Inclusive. And uh, uh, we are really pleased to, you know, kind of celebrate Global Awareness Accessibility Day during this mini podcast and getting your point of view on uh, accessibility inclusion uh, for people of determination. But let's start from the beginning. Tell us more about the story behind Inclusive, how it all started. I'm really happy to be here today, and I think this is a continuing tradition. It's our second year that Roberto and I sit together for Global Accessibility Awareness Day, and it's such an important day today as well to recognize the efforts towards accessibility for people of determination. Uh, so Inclusive has a story which is very, very close to my heart. Uh, I started Inclusive in 2019. And it really began because uh, growing up with a single parent, I've seen my mom really bring up my brother, who's also a person of determination. Uh, my brother, Ahmed, lives with spinal bifida. And um, I just thought there was nothing really that existed that brought the world together on an online platform about inclusion of people of determination. So it started with an idea of sketching out an app. And I started drawing this thing on a paper and showing it to Ahmed as well. And then luckily Abu Dhabi uh, launched the first ever social innovation program of its kind, which was going to fund and support startups who were going to find holistic solutions for inclusion of people of determination. So at that point, back in 2019, Ahmed and myself went to pitch. Ahmed was then 16 and I was only 24 years old. Um, we went together and half of that pitch, which was a five minute session was Ahmed playing the piano. Because we were showing the judges that talent is unlimited, talent is equal, and everybody should get the opportunity. And I always think of this, you know, my parents are growing up the kind of lens that we had as siblings around Ahmed. We always looked at equality. I, I never actually um, thought that, you know, because he's using a wheelchair for mobility differences, it's something that can actually become, you know, a barrier. But I know that the world doesn't yet share that lens with me. And I just wanted to make sure people saw it from my vision. So we are here now. It has cannonballed. I know UAE supports the inclusion of people of determination so much. So we couldn't have had a better platform. We ended up winning that pitch uh, top 10 startups out of 523 applications from across the world. And really, it became a journey of me and Ahmed at that, that, that point because it was something we were doing out of so much love. Um, today, we're an app. We have so many users coming in, logging in as people of determination, applying to jobs. And we give the opportunity also to employers to hire with impact and hire um, with inclusion. So hire people of determination on their teams. That's awesome, that's awesome. I love when you said uh, that everybody has potential, right? That uh, has to be nurtured, which, which is at the, at the heart of what we call a growth mindset. Also, a lot of organizations do not understand that accessibility has to do also with business. It is as if like uh, every uh, five people that come at knocking at your door, you leave one out of five uh, out, right? So there is, there is a huge impact also on, on, on the business side of things. So it's not just uh, uh, for uh, helping people, which is, which, is, which is great. So how inclusive is really helping then people of determination and how do you think startups should be more inclusive and build for everyone? Absolutely. I think, you know, startups are the decision makers, um, the founders that are coming up, the budding founders. I'm sure you meet so many people who are so full of energy and they're doing things that they're doing absolutely out of passion. I think founders have a real responsibility that the businesses that they're bringing up now and the things that they're creating, they should have accessibility and inclusion baked into them, not like an afterthought. So this is what we usually say at Inclusive as well. Accessibility is not an afterthought. If you're starting a business now, you have the opportunity to include 100% of the population. Why leave 15% out? That's also a market. They do have spending power. Yeah. So why are you leaving people of determination out of a product or service that you're building? Um, initially, when we're all going through our startup phases, I mean, we're a startup too, we all think about how to make this product good for our users, right? So the question that I'm asking is, as a startup, when you say users, do you consider 100% of the users? Is your product and your service hearing 
friendly? Is it mobility friendly? Is it sensory friendly? Think about those different aspects. Start researching and by all means, reach out to us. We're yep. here to help. You know? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. This is, this is fantastic, uh, Afsa, because at the heart of it is uh, what we like to say is that in the past, uh, you had to adapt to the world and uh, today is the world that needs to adapt to you. And you really need to build uh, your products, your startup with inclusive design, inclusive, uh, inclus inclusive and uh, um, accessibility in mind. Thank you so much. Uh, and we will definitely uh, celebrate uh, Global Awareness Accessibility Day next year as well. So let's keep the tradition going. Absolutely. And uh, thank you uh, for attending this mini Roberto podcast, uh, first and last episode. What's up everyone? We are in Dubai Knowledge Park. It's 48 degrees outside. I'm going to see Roberto because he's the expert, because I have this question I've been dying to find out about what ingredients are needed for a success. Roberto, come stai Roberto? Bene Zarco, amen. Good to see you, good to see you. Good to see you. We're here at the ICCA, Dubai, International Center for Culinary Arts. And I'm here with Roberto. So Roberto, what is, uh, what is the, the ingredients to make a good, successful tiramisu? A good tiramisu? Yeah, a good one, yeah. You really want to know the ingredients? I heard tiramisu is Italian, no? Man, uh, <laughs> you, you will appreciate that. Good, good, uh, let's see. So we, in fact, we start with a good coffee. Okay. Good coffee. We have uh, cacao, cocoa. Cocoa. Powder. Yeah, no cocoa co powder. No, no cocoa, no. Cocoa powder. Cocoa powder, okay. We have uh, some beautiful eggs. Eggs. Essence of vanilla. Okay. Vanilla. Okay. Vanilla, yeah. Nothing okay. more, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mascarpone. <laughs> okay. Sugar, very healthy. Nice. These biscuits, Savoyardi. Uh-huh. Very good. The, this, is, this is all, and the last ingredient is love. Love? Yes, ah, it's right. in there. That, that's a it? good one, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can feel we it. We are uh, ready to go. Roberto, that looks so solid. Luckily yeah, yeah. enough, we are on the good track of, uh, very of the good, good very side good. of it. Roberto, you said that those are the ingredients to make a successful tiramisu cake. You yeah. have to be like cocoa and coffee and whatever, but what I wanted to ask you a little bit deeper is what are the successful ingredients to make a successful startup? You work with a lot of startups, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it all starts with falling in love with the problem first, right? So when you fall in love with the problem, you understand, for example, what's my problem now? What's your problem? I know your problem, you're hungry, right? But you're not just hungry, you want something good. Yeah, yeah. So course. this is why I'm doing a tiramisu for you. Okay, good, yeah. good. So, but you need to start with a problem, a real problem, so that when you, when you build something, you build something with a purpose, right? And you help other people uh, that hopefully are going to use your product. Then you need to look into the, the people. People is probably the key factor to, to build a startup. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, ultimately is the, is, is the factor, right? So uh, that, that you have to have a kick-ass team. Uh, and people that even if they are talents, when they come together as a team, they're able to build uh, on your vision, right? As a founder. Then uh, last ingredient. The last ingredient? Love. 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 You need to love what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So even if it uh, doesn't get uh, perfect, maybe you because you love it, you eat it as well. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Which vertical has a strong growth potential for you? Let me start answering this question from a different kind of thinking. So first of all, for me, before uh, thinking about which vertical, uh, uh, because as a founder as, uh, or as an entrepreneur, you don't wake up in the morning and think I'm going to disrupt this vertical, right? So you're, you're sure. thinking, hey, the customers here, as a customer, I have this pain point. Yeah. So to me is more which experience is going to be disrupted. Yeah. Uh, which customer experience, user experience. So where are the real needs, the real problems? Exactly, right? the so, real needs. Yeah. So for me, the thinking should be around more the, the use cases, the user experience, understanding uh, where users have pain points in their circumstances where they're trying to achieve or to do something. Mm -hmm. So, and that doesn't answer your question. So back to your point then, yes, uh, there are verticals where it's no doubt here in the region, they have already showed potential of growth like FinTech. Mm -hmm. We see many, sure. many FinTech solutions uh, uh, flourishing here with the regulators, uh, the IFC and the DGM here in the UAE or Bahrain as well in the ecosystem here doing amazing stuff. It would come easy uh, to mention probably healthcare and biotech, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not just because of the pandemic, but because it's really, it's where technology can really help to 
predict, for example, diseases or to make it easier, uh, you know, uh, to, to, uh, diagnosis. to diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. Just, just beyond the, the apps that we are seeing here about connecting patients with doctors, which of course is part of the experience. It's but part of the experience. But, but, but to me, uh, the, the, the sector I'm more passionate about, and we talked before about youth, is education. Okay. Because uh, the pandemic and it showed that there is a real gap in education, whether it's uh, real the real skills that are in need in this new uncertain world and and what's happening uh, you know what students are exposed to today in an education system that was uh, built in a different industrial age uh, with different needs but now uh, the world is accelerating and it, it, there are different needs right mm -hmm. so education uh, for me if you ask me a vertical that i'm curious about to yeah. see more because what i'm seeing today are solutions that are not really most of the solutions are not tapping the real issues with issues. education okay. and they they need to also consider more of all the stakeholders involved which is not just just sorry the teachers and the students but also the parents, the parents uh, but course. also and, and others right so yeah. uh, education is one i would pick in terms of being very passionate about it and curious about uh, more development happening uh, to to, de to really see innovation okay uh, in, in, in okay so fintech and education for you are the biotech as well and uh, biotech yeah also. Okay. And, and the wish for me would be to see more of impact driven okay. uh, impact driven uh, startups and ventures, which could be across all verticals, which is about sustainability, okay. is about accessibility with touch base before. Uh, this should be embedded, not just be a separate vertical, should be embedded across all, uh, all verticals uh, to see uh, not just the profitability of the business, but also mm -hmm. the societal impact uh, when it comes to environment, when it comes to climate change, when it comes to water, when it comes to carbon and, and so on and so forth. Okay, amazing, Roberto. Just one last question, please. You need to answer very quickly. Okay, okay. can we say that uh, UAE, Dubai, the Middle East is the next Eldorado for, for the startup ecosystem after Silicon Valley, Europe? Can we say that? Yes, no? Uh, short answer, uh, not yet. Uh, uh, longer answer is, uh, there are many things happening here that are positive signals towards uh, making uh, the UAE uh, a regional hub uh, uh -huh. and a thriving hub for entrepreneurs to build from. Uh, I believe, as we said before, that if we want to be real and, and not just stopping at PRs, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, is we need to invest in a long-term 10-15 years plan, starting from education, yeah. attracting Arab talents elsewhere in the world to come back and give back to this region yeah. that have experience to give back. Uh, having ranked the universities, investing in PhDs, building more uh, 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 collaboration between the corporate, private sector and public sector and universities and education. And these PhDs will turn themselves into professors for the region to give back to the region. And it has to be a sustainable environment. The other thing is we need to celebrate success when success is real. It's Meaning real. Uh, we have a lot of Me Too uh, startups today here and uh, the ambition should be higher. We should have startups that understand technology deeper and understand and tap into real problems uh, and, and not just uh, copying and paste business models uh, just to localize for the region, but why region. not thinking global first from this region, exporting technology from this region. This can only start if we invest in a long-term plan, starting from education, from youth yeah. and, and doing things All right. All the value chain. Uh, yeah, start as from other the, ecosystem yeah, yeah. did already and they showed that this is the way to go. Like uh, take about India is two hours flight from here. Uh, you know, uh, Indians that uh, gained their experiences abroad, uh, they started giving back and uh, 15 years ago and they built an ecosystem now that is thriving. Very strong uh, ecosystem. And then they give back to youth and, and they build a positive circle, right? So we, we, we really need to enable that beyond, uh, you know, declarations or PR or marketing. That's the real thing that needs to happen. Thanks, Roberto. It went well uh, through uh, this uh, art talk session. So after making your tiramisu now, we need to do a little bit of sports. So let's go to meet your second super guest and let's make some sport. So you talk it was only one, but actually we have the second mini Roberto podcast, second and last episode, most likely. <laughs> We have, we, here with us today, we have Clarence, Clarence Seedorf, he's a legend. <laughs> he's a legend uh, and uh, no, he's a great, he's a great person uh, that uh, it's a pleasure we have as a guest uh, for, for our podcast as we talk about uh, startups, empowering founders, uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, uh, here in the region and youth. 
So welcome, Clarence, and thank, thank you, you for so much, making the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so how do you see uh, the similarities between startups and professional sports? So are there common things that you, you see overlapping? Yes, yes, actually, yes. I mean, uh, when, when a young player starts his career, it's, this, it's the starting yeah. point of, of uh, hopefully something uh, good. Uh, and uh, actually, if we go even further, when they start at the age of 13, uh, and to, to be part of the youth academies uh, of the professional clubs. I mean, that is the moment where, where talent needs to be developed and explored and, and nurtured, no? Yep. Uh, and then the moment you become, you know, out of that small percentage, a professional, then it's just still not said that you're going to make it all the way through. So in those first years, I think there's a lot of risk that you know you make wrong choices uh, yeah. uh, you would have difficulty to actually have space in the market because there's competition because you're the less ex least experienced um, so either the talent is extremely high which is a very 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 small percentage or you need to be very consistent and and uh, just continue to learn fast adapt fast to the things that you're experiencing. But when, for example, in uh, football teams, we see sometimes that uh, it comes a moment where the thing that, that clubs done is change a coach because that re-energizes the team or there are dynamics. So what's your advice for founders to build successful teams? Because then it's, it's the founder is the, is the soul of the startup, but then yeah. they need kick ass team, right, to perform. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not a uh, big believer in changing coaches all the time. Um, I think it's uh, actually one of the uh, problems of, of uh, professional football. There is, uh, and it's uh, hurting the talent mm -hmm. uh, because you don't give them any consistency in their work and philosophy they have to work with. Uh, and it's more a, a luck factor that, oh, this coach is working now. And then because even the best coaches, they go to certain places, they don't perform. Yeah. Uh, and then they're kicked out again. But maybe you keep them a little bit longer and things are coming together. Yeah. Uh, and of course, sometimes it's necessary to change. But the most, the most important thing uh, uh, in that sense for me is to, you know, uh, you, you, build, you build a team, you build an idea, you create your, um, uh, how I call it, the, the most important elements around it to, to then build from that point on, mm -hmm. you know. In football, uh, every time that we have been successful, because there was a proper team around it, there was a proper leadership around it, and the chemistry was there, the yep. cohesion was there, and then you grow. If things don't work out, make sure you did everything so you don't have any regrets. Yeah. And uh, then maybe the outcome was not exactly what you wanted. Then learn from that. But you don't have anything and then, to regret. And then, and then continue to build on yourself and to get better. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. We can go on for hours, but I guess uh, my mini, mini Roberto's second podcast is finished. So the last, last episode. Uh, I don't think there is going to be a third one. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much, Clarence, for being with us today. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you, Clarence. Pleasure. Back to the studio, uh, we had a very nice moment with uh, Clarence, the super football star from uh, AC Milano. Thank you so much, Roberto. Thank you for taking part to Take Waves at uh, WeWork Office in our studio. So, all okay? It was good? I loved uh, it. Yeah, I loved it. I'm looking forward to Jitex this year. Uh, I loved it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the tiramisu. Thank you, Roberto. Thank Thanks. Jitex, AI everything, Jitex Future Star, Future Blockchain Summit, Fintech Surge, and Marketing Mania, the biggest tech show of the year from the 17th to 21st of October at Dubai World Trade Center. Year 2021 is a big celebration for UAE, celebrating 50 years of their existence, plus hosting two of the most powerful shows in the world, Jitex and Expo 2020 Dubai.